don't eat the cord. In this Bondi vet compilation, expect the unexpected. Oh my god. <laughs> as our Bondi vets meet their most surprising patients. No way. <laughs> From a rare albino echidna. Kylie's set me a real challenge. This is not going to be easy. To a bizarre raccoon dog. And either it looks really sweet or it's trying to get me. <laughs> and even the king of the jungle. No, we've never had a lion before. One thing is for certain, these aren't your average patients. A little high five. Thank you. Hello. You're here to see Chris this morning? Yes, we'd like him to have a look at our cat. Okay, a little kitty cat. Can I have a little look? Yes, certainly. No way. <laughs> <laughs> Just a little unusual. This is definitely a first for the Bondi Clinic. That is just, that's made my day, made my week. Donna and Amanda from the animal rescue group Lottle have brought in a very unusual patient for Chris to examine. We wanted Dr Chris to give her her first health check. We thought she's a very special animal, we wanted her to see a very special vet. So, and we thought it'd be a, a lovely surprise for him as well. All right, so Zambi, right? That's correct, yes. <laughs> <laughs> we get a lot of cats through the door here. I mean, Persians, Himalayans, Burmese, Burmans, we get the lot. Not this kind of cat, though. You are just a little bit special. Come here. Come on. This is about as good as it gets. I kind of thought we'd seen almost everything here at the Bondi Clinic. No, we've never had a lion before. I think Dr Chris was extremely surprised when he saw Sammy. No, he didn't. Oh no, trust me, he did. He was not expecting a lion cub to come out of that little carrier. So, I guess the question is, <laughs> how? How do you have her and, and what is she doing in here now? Her mother, uh, Tansa, uh, was acting a bit strange with her. Being the first time mum, she was picking her up a lot, pacing back and forth in the den, wanting to take her out into the big enclosure. So you just, she just showed quite anxious behaviour, did she? Yeah, very anxious. Yeah. She seemed a little stressed. We, we just got too worried, so we thought it was in her best interest to be hand-reared yeah, with us. absolutely. When Zambi's mother threatened to harm her, Donna and Amanda became the cub's surrogate mums. There's no doubt that Donna has done the right thing in taking Zambi away from her mother. It's not ideal, but the reality is, kept in that situation, the risk of injury just becomes too great. My hope is that you got her away from mum in time and and we can transition her into, I guess, her, her new life now. Yes, yes. The first priority really is to establish that she is healthy. She's gone through a lot, so ensuring she's at a good point now can set her up for the rest of her life. Her heart sounds good. Oh, excellent. Yeah, heart sounds no nice, and, <laughs> nice and strong. It's a really critical time right now because without the antibodies coming in from her mother's milk, she is at risk of infection. And that can be from bacterial infections or it can be from viruses. So what I would actually like to do today is give her a vaccination. Okay, her first vaccine. Yeah. We're really throwing out the rule book by giving Zambia her vaccination at four weeks of age, but I wouldn't figure myself if she got an infection now that could have been prevented by a vaccination. It's a risk we have to take. I'll give her my pacifying finger. <laughs> good girl, good girl. <coughs> oh, here we go. There she's go. suckling. Hey. Good girl. Oh. Okay, so that's going to make us a little bit more relaxed about her being protected from infection. Yes. The other thing she needs is something you can't give in a bottle or in a needle, and that's socialisation. With all this focus on how healthy Zambi is medically, it's easy to forget her social needs, which are just as important. She needs to learn to be a lion. If she's not in a pride, because yes. she's not with a mother, that's where it becomes a bit tricky for her. But what you can do, and this isn't easy, what you can do is actually give her a pride of her own. She can't go into lions because that would probably tear her apart. But what we can do is try to find animals that will accept her, yet still have that, that team environment. What I'm talking about are dogs. Yes. I think we might have the dog. 
Yeah. We'll give her a go. I know, I know which one you're thinking of, Sabi. Yeah. What's Sabi? She's a Labrador. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but she's, yeah, she keeps everyone else in line at home. Yeah. So, I mean, we could give it a go. When Amanda tells me that her dog is a Labrador, my eyes light up. We are talking about the most perfect surrogate out there, mainly because they're obliging, they're understanding, they're patient, and they're very loving. It's a little bit crazy. I know it sounds a bit weird, but there are situations where this has been done around the world, and, and it has worked very well. But there's no guarantees. No. She could turn her nose up and say, no. Nope, yeah. Not dealing with that. Giving Zambi a surrogate mum in the form of a Labrador could potentially be the greatest thing for her. But sometimes these things don't go to plan. I need to be out there to make sure this doesn't go badly. How are you going? <laughs> It's like Got great. some of the relatives over here. Huh? It is. Thanks for coming out. We That's really right. appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, no worries. All right, should we go and introduce little Zambi to the new mum? Yes, yes, let's, let's do. Let's right. do it. My plan is to do something that seems a little bit strange at first. We're going to try to give Zambi a new mother in the form of a Labrador. What I'm thinking is I'd love to meet our new mum first without Zambi being around. Uh -huh. So something I want to try that I think is going to ease this introduction. Why don't you take Chris to meet Sabi? I'll take Andy baby. Oh, come it's on, right, Which way is she? Yeah, yeah she's just up here. Okay. <laughs> Who's it going to be, huh? There's no shortage of volunteers for the surrogate role. Here she is here. She's, she's in there? Yep. But one special lab has been singled out. Calling Sabi. Sabi? Good girl. Here we go. <laughs> That's a good start. Labradors are known for their maternal instincts, and Chris has big plans for Sabi. The hope here is that we can create the feeling of a pride of lions. How we're going to do that, though, I haven't told the girls. There is a bit of a trick here. Dogs make up their mind about things as much on the scent of them as they do on the sight of them. OK. So uh -huh. that's where this comes in handy. So what we're going to do is take Zabi's scent yep. from her body and put it on Zambi. So okay. when she smells Zambi, she's going to go, ooh, that cologne is strangely familiar. This is the best part of she's the day. She's loving it. it. Huh? This whole motherhood <laughs> thing it's not seeming too bad, is it? OK. Let's have the towel started. Oh, wow. So the towel is now. <laughs> Ooh. Oof. Potent. It's rank. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Donna, I think we're ready. OK, so my plan is this is covered in Sabi scent. Oh. What I'm going to do is rub this all over Zambi. Uh -huh. So we're essentially trying to fool Sabi into thinking Zambi is a liner door. A liner door? <laughs> I love it. Part lion, part yeah. Labrador. OK. Oh, it's all right. You like that? Oh. Zambi isn't too sure about suddenly smelling like a Labrador, but Chris is hoping his gamble will work. Right now, all the groundwork has been laid. We have Zambi, who smells like a dog. We have Sabi, who looks like being the perfect mother. I'm excited about how this goes, but at the same time, I'm a little bit wary. This was my idea. If this doesn't go well, I could be leaving here in a hurry. So just remember to take it nice and slow. Obviously, Zambi's okay. never really seen one like Sabi before, and Sabi's never seen one like Zambi before, so we'll just try to go in nice and slowly. Hey. I am anxious about this. It could work one way or the other, and Sabi could not want anything to do with the cub at all, or her maternal instincts might kick in, hopefully, and it could all turn out beautifully. There we go. Ooh, just nice and slow. Nice and slow. Just licks, just licks. There we go. There's certainly no, no stress or anxiety there. That's, that's a full-on first meeting, but that is a, a successful gentle, first gentle, meeting. Gentle, gentle. <laughs> She's just little. She's just little. She's only a little boy. Oh, I could tell that Sabi had love to give, but just how much love to give, that was a surprise. But what I find amazing is that she's, she's looked at Zambi and hasn't seen a lion. She's seen 
one of hers, almost, that, that needs help. Oh, good girl. Yeah. I mean, this is a fantastic result, Chris. It's extraordinary. I think Chris's idea with the scented cloth helped out lots. She just jumped straight in there and just started being a mother to her. So, as a first meeting, that really couldn't have gone any better. Sabi and Zambi will spend the next few months living together. The hope is Sabi will teach Zambi how to live in a pack and set her up for the rest of her life. After such an enthusiastic first meeting between Sabi and Zambi, it'd be rude not to come back and see how this relationship develops. You know what? It might just be time to catch up with a girl that hasn't been too easy to forget. Chris is on his way to the Lottel Animal Rescue Headquarters in Western Sydney to check up on Zambi, the lion cub. Oh, hello, my not so little girl. <laughs> How are you? Wow, what a greeting. <laughs> when I first see Zambi running towards me, I'm thinking, oh, she's grown up. The last time Chris saw little Zambi, she was just four weeks old. This is about as good as it gets, isn't it? The tiny cub was being hand raised by Donna and Amanda, but needed a surrogate animal mum to help her develop socially. Oh, a bit bigger than last time? Just a little. <laughs> now Zambi is five months old, Chris wants to see just how his left field idea of having Sabi the Labrador raise the cub has worked out. Oh, hello. The whole family's here. <laughs> hello. Hello. <laughs> so, was she the mother? We hope she would be. Oh, she's been wonderful. Yeah. Yeah, she's been toileting her for us. Um, she keeps her company, sleeps with her. She's making a growl like a lion. <laughs> See, she has See, picked, up, picked from... up a few things. <laughs> Sabi's a great mum. Yeah, I couldn't have asked for any better. She looks after her, she sleeps with her, and she's very protective of her. She is the best mum ever. Sabi, you gotta say, we took a punt on you, <laughs> huh? We really took a chance on you. We probably asked a lot more of you than one should ever ask of a dog. But you delivered, didn't you? Sure did. Bringing Labradors and lions together was always going to be a calculated risk, but it couldn't have gone better. Shall we have a little look at you? Let's go over here. Let's go over here. <laughs> hey, now look what happens, huh? Now you can't leave with it attached to me. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, this is a great game, isn't it? Huh? It's a I, perfect game. I knew game. this was going to turn into yeah. fun and games. So. <laughs> oh, so when you chew it, I don't hear your heart, I just hear your chewing. No? Yeah, it just sounds good. Oh. Yeah. You've been very cooperative now, aren't you? Well, you do need to talk about one thing. This may not go down too well, so I'm going to break to you slowly. It's vaccination time. So these are often the times where they remind you they are a lion. <laughs> Not a dog after all. Perfect. Well done. <laughs> it's a big relief. She's in great health. But we must say, Sabi's done a wonderful job. Yeah, great. Yeah, she's fabulous. It worked a treat that we could put Zambia with the Labradors. It would have been really hard for a human to take over that role as her mum. <laughs> They've just been so good to her. I couldn't have asked for any better. So these are the patients. I want you to have a look at. Okay. Andy and Keely have asked Scott to help them with two of their most unusual animals. Well, then take a guess. <laughs> uh, well, it's a mammal. It looks like a raccoon. It does, and that's what its name is, a raccoon dog. OK. So, and either it looks really sweet or it's trying to get me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know which one. He, he is quite sweet. I have to be tentative with him. Hello. Looks like a cat. I would imagine that Scott's never seen a raccoon dog before. Oh, hello. Aren't you beautiful? Although people seem to believe it's a raccoon, it's not related to a raccoon in any way, shape or form. It's actually the canine species. The pair of raccoon dogs living at the farm are brother and sister, Bert and Baby. They were both sold as pets to separate homes, but were rejected and have now been taken in by Andy and Keely. <laughs> Hello, you're going to be nice, hey? 
Are you going to be nice? Thank you. Ooh, maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> They are advertised online as being dog-like and very friendly. And unfortunately, then people do buy them, uh, realise they can't cope with them, and then they do end up in rescue centres. Today, Andy and Keely are hoping to reunite these siblings. What we're trying to do here is we want to integrate them together. But before we can do that, we need a health check from a vet before we can think about introducing animals together. Let's get to it. Let's get you in there. So raccoon dogs, by their very nature, are social creatures and they form a big family unit. So we want to sort of recreate that within the captive environment. We've castrated Bert simply because we don't want any undesirable offspring and not to mention the fact that they're brother and sister, so we don't want any inbreeding whatsoever. Hello, Bert. So he's our male raccoon. We got him when he was younger, so he spent a lot of time around humans, hence why he's a bit more amicable. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Right, this Enough. is them amicable, is it? <laughs> wow, they, they are some teeth. Go. They are indeed, Aren't they? Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> they, I nearly had my first raccoon dog bite. <laughs> raccoon dogs originate from East Asia and are often hunted for their fur. Wow, just feeling this fur, it's absolutely incredible, isn't it? Yeah, it's fantastically thick. Um, unfortunately, that's part of the problem. So they originated from Japan and they were right. imported to Eastern Europe for the purpose of hunting, for the fur trade. Well, most people don't wear fur anymore. But unfortunately, in 2008, they found traces of raccoon dog fur in fake fur as well. You're joking. So you could be inadvertently wearing raccoon dog there. Oh my God, it doesn't feel, <laughs> doesn't feel like. <laughs> I don't think. <laughs> well, let's vaccinate you, mate, and then we can reintroduce you to this little lady next door, eh? Hey? It's really important to check animals over before they're going to be integrated with another animal, just to make sure that they are healthy, and then once you've established that, to vaccinate them to protect their health. Good boy. And then you can have your friend. With Bert vaccinated and given the all clear to mingle with his sister, it's now baby's turn. But Andy has concerns about today's experiment. Baby is quite a subdued, subordinate female. Bert, on the other hand, is quite immature, so he wants to play all the time, whereas she wants to act like a, an adult raccoon dog. So I'm worried that when they get together, he might be a bit too rough with her. Hello, sweetie. Hello. Do you smell vet, do you? That's probably the problem. Scott now needs to capture Baby for her vaccination. Ah, gotcha. Catching my first raccoon dog was actually not quite as terrifying as I thought that it was going to be. Oh, poor baby. <laughs> I mean it, poor baby. <laughs> right. And hey, I didn't get bitten, so successful outing. Can we have a little hug? Good girl. Yeah, that's it. Good girl. Good girl. That's it. We're hoping when they're together, she'll come out of a shell more so she can become more of a raccoon dog, hopefully. They play oh, nicely. They play nice, yeah. yeah. All right, we'll give you your vaccination. Good girl. Hey, and then you can finally live the rest of your life with your brother. Okay. Hey, you're all done. Cutting's oh, over. Like a medic that stands on the side of a football field just in case of injury, I need to be here to make sure that when these two raccoon dogs get introduced, that they don't rip each other to shreds. If there is any kind of injury, they can bleed out quite quickly, and it's a really important idea that a vet's here to make sure that everything goes smoothly. You're looking yep. a little nervous. A little bit. But yeah. she seems to be looking for him. Yeah. So that's a good sign. All right, Andy, shall we uh, bring Bro over? But be gentle with your sister, young man. Just place him down. There you go. Now remember, you're a guest. Yeah. So be polite. Ready? Let's just hope there's no bloodshed. No overt aggression, straight yeah. up, so that's good. And you know how siblings can fight, don't you? Quite right, yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. Good boy, Bert. A little bit of grooming going on there. That's got to be a good sign. Yeah, really good sign. Yeah. The introduction's gone really well. The mutual grooming that's occurring and the fact that there's no aggression whatsoever, I would feel comfortable leaving them now as a little family unit. We'll obviously keep an eye on them and monitor them on a regular basis to make sure there's no sort of untoward aggression or uh, injuries to either of them, but I think it's looking promising. Little brother, come home to roost. Hey, cheeky little thing. Two intriguing animals, along with Keeper Kylie from the Symbio Wildlife Park, have arrived at the Bondi Clinic. 
So today we brought in Rex and Leo, which are two native Australian mammals. They're very important to us. Now the reason why we brought Rex and Leo in today is because one of them, Leo, has not been sexed. So we want to determine the sex because hopefully we can start to get into breeding next season. And you have a place that's full of surprises, so... We do. Ah, let's go through them and let's work it out there. <laughs> when I first see Kylie, she has this coy look on her face, almost bordering on smug. When she has that look on her face, it worries me. It means she knows whatever's in this box is going to surprise me. Which one's my patient? The smaller one. Smaller one. Intriguing. Wow. Have you ever seen one like this before? No. No, I have not. But look at you. So this is Leo, and Leo is a very special echidna. This is an albino echidna. Incredibly rare. You'd be lucky to see an albino echidna once in your lifetime. How did you end up having him in the first place? Around four years ago, Leo was actually handed to us from members of the public. Yeah. They, um, they found Leo in a car park in Berry as a little puggle, yeah. but Leo wasn't able to look after himself, so we took Leo in and finished off raising him or her, and yeah, we've had Leo ever since. So you need to know if Leo is Leo or Leone? Yes. Yeah, so Leo is four this year, which means that um, he, she is becoming sexually mature. Mm. So um, it's the time that we should be able to determine what sex he, she is. Um, and hopefully, once we determine the sex, we can um, look at breeding next season. If you want to know if your echidna is Arthur or Martha, you have to wait until they're at least four years of age. By that stage, they've reached sexual maturity. They actually have those organs and they're a proper size. Until that point, there's no point even trying. Do you realise what you're asking of me? <laughs> Sex and echidnas is notoriously difficult. Yes, it is. Because they only have one hole, and what's inside that hole, they like to keep a mystery. Yes, they do. Um, so, yeah, OK. Kylie has set me a real challenge. This is not going to be easy. Could we actually get Rex out? That we can. Wow, she's a lot bigger. She's a heavy little thing. So we know that Rex there is a girl. Yes, Rex is a female. This is actually perfect. I mean, now I can see if there are any similarities or any differences. Hopefully then we'll have our answer. Males tend to have the spurs, females tend not to, but you can yeah. have females that do have spurs as so well. So typically males do have spurs on the inside of their hind legs, mm. but there is a percentage of females that have been found to have spurs, and there's also a percentage of males that have been found not to have spurs. There's actually a tiny little spine there. Yep. But as we know, it's no guarantee. Rex doesn't have any. On size, what about the size comparison of the two of them? Females are meant to be bigger. Typically, yes. But Rex is a bit older. Yeah. Yeah. So we're getting a few little clues, but they're not really leading us one way or the other. No. We're a little bit stuck. Yes. The only one in this room that knows the truth <laughs> is Leo. And Leo's not saying anything. There is a little technique I have in my arsenal that's, well, a little bit special and can sometimes give you a bit of a clue as to whether Leo is male or female. But I don't bring it out just willy nilly. You'll see why. You know, if you tickle their belly, sometimes um, they can let you know exactly what they think of the belly rat. tickle. Belly yep. Mm. I want to point out that my hand is, is quite high um, in his stomach region and no other spot. <laughs> He's grabbing my hand too. <laughs> is that the spot? Is it? Huh? Although Chris is doing a really good job at tickling Leo, I think that maybe Chris isn't Leo's type. Clearly Leo has some stage fright or, or is just unable to make an appearance, if you know what I mean. We're still no closer to knowing whether Leo is male or female, so it's going to take an anaesthetic to find out. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. What is with the colour? Yeah, he's an albino or she's an albino. He or she? Yeah, exactly. That's why Leo's here. Oh it's a big day in its life. So, I know that we usually use something like this, that but... That may be problematic. Yeah. 
this isn't a good fit, so we're actually going to need to make a mask for an echidna. Give me a syringe, some tape and some tubing, and I reckon I can make you an echidna anaesthetic mask. That's more like it. All right, should we start? Let's do it. Leo's keeper Kylie is keen to find out what Chris will discover. So I am quite confident that we'll be able to determine the sex accurately with Leo today, um, being that we are in breeding season. So typically the best time to sex an echidna is in breeding season when their organs are ready to go. So fingers crossed. Leo's going to go to sleep in a world of pink, possibly wake up in a world of blue or pink. So we do need to get Leo quite deep with this. We'll get Leo to his back here. So you happy there? Yeah, yeah he's good at the moment. All right, so, so what we're looking for is a little bulge in front of his or her cloaca here. So if we look here, we can see that the leg bone, so femur, coming up here. Now what we should be seeing if Leo's a male with a little bulge here, and I'm really not. So, at the moment we're leaning more towards female. What's that? I actually feel something. That is tucked away. You see that? You're seeing the unmistakable echidna penis. That's <laughs> the weirdest looking thing I've ever seen. <laughs> there is no doubt that Leo is a boy. I think we should tell Kylie. I think you should see this. Wow. Yeah. It's definitely a boy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not just an albino, but an albino male. Male. That's mm. very exciting. Looking at Kylie, it's clear she's absolutely stoked. Now that we know Leo is a boy, she's going to be able to find him the perfect partner and together they'll be able to breed. So we'll wake him up and we'll deliver the news to Leo himself. <laughs> himself, as opposed to herself. Okay. He looks so sweet. <laughs> well, now we know, huh? Yeah. A little high five. Thank you. All right. Yep. Brothers. <laughs> Good work, Leo. You want to go home now? Okay. Leo is clearly a man, very clearly, and we bonded in a very close way. But now it's time for Leo to go home. Is there like a welcome home Leo party <laughs> plan? Not we, yet, but I'm sure we can organise one. A whole lot of masculine activities. <laughs> so there you go. Thank it's you right for to that. Go home. All right. How'd they go on the trip? Good. Chris and Kylie have now arrived at Symbio Wildlife Park just south of Sydney. OK, guys. Home time. Get them out? Yeah. Leo, a little albino echidna, has just been sexed as a male mm. and hopefully will go on to breed. Is it just me or does Leo have an extra spring in his step <laughs> now that he's a new man? I think so. Guess what we've got coming down? Oh, what? A lace monitor. A what? A goanna. Goanna? Yeah. It's coming down? Yeah, just got a phone call. Um, this guy is a pet goanna that's been attacked by one of his bigger ones. So the one that attacked him was probably about that big. And the one that's coming <laughs> down... <laughs> the one that's coming down is probably only about a kilo. Uh, it's pretty bad. It's um, a couple of centimetres deep and um, all across from one side to the other. Peter has a collection of 20 goannas at home and one of the larger family members has attacked the much smaller five-year-old belly. To be honest, I am a little bit scared of reptiles. They give me the creeps. And treating or handling one of these is a bit of a nightmare for me. Hi, little one. You can't really trust them. I've been bitten by her actually a while back when she was smaller. I had to go to hospital for that. I'm going to actually, if you don't mind, take her out the back and get Jess our nurse to help me get that bandage off and we can take a look. 
We're supposed to learn about all animals at uni, but quite honestly, all I can remember about lizards and reptiles are a few lectures we had back in third year. Yeah, if you can be comfortable that you're going to hold her and that she's not going to bite me, because honestly, I don't deal with reptiles very often and I'm instilling all my faith in you. Okay. Okay. I used to work up at um, Australia Zoo Wildlife Hospital and we did a lot of um, lace monitors up there, wild ones, so I don't have a problem with a pet one. <laughs> they're really cute as babies. Very, very cute. So they're just misunderstood. Um, it's the claws and the tails that you need to watch out for in these guys, okay. not necessarily their mouth. All right. Now her tail, is there a spike? They, or no, they flick it really, they just really flick hard. It hard. Yeah. Okay, so I'm just going to get my bruise from that and it's scratched and shredded from the claws. Fantastic. I'm a bit nervous. I just am yeah, looking. I've got him. I'm looking at his claws. <laughs> I don't even like the feel of this. Before Lisa can treat the severe wound, she wants to give Bally a general anaesthetic. Finding the right spot oh. is proving extremely difficult. <laughs> oh my God, Steph! <laughs> it's not the easiest thing to do because um, you can't really see the vein. I guess if I was taking blood for a dog or a cat, I could feel the vein and I could see it. Here we're kind of going in blind. There it is. I anesthetised a lace monitor. <laughs> but maybe the first and last time. <laughs> right, hun, just take some deep breaths. Talking to a lizard here. Look, oh. Oh, she's really been ripped to pieces here. I see all the flesh and muscle right underneath there, so that big lace monitor has obviously come up to her and just taken a chunk out of her neck, and this, this needs to be stitched. I guess the main thing that I'm concerned about is um, infection. Goannas have got really nasty bacteria in their mouth and in their claws, and that bacteria can almost be venomous, it's that bad. So if we don't stitch up this wound and get her on some antibiotics, she can die from septic infection. How far down are we going? We've got to work pretty quickly here because they're obviously very sensitive animals, very prone to stress. muscle under there is really shredded. The good thing is it doesn't look like it's gone through to her spinal cord. If it had, she would probably be paralysed, but I really need to fix up this shredded muscle and, and treat any chance of infection. Even though these reptiles freak me out a little bit, looking at Belly, I actually feel quite sorry for her. She has been bullied by a big bloke and she has copped a terrible bite. Thank you. All right, here we go. Her skin is really thick and tough, so I need to use a very thick suture material in order to close that wound. In a dog or cat, I would use something a lot finer. I'm trying to do neat ones so that she still maintains her attractive looks. And we're done. Anti-inflammatory and antibiotic injections finish the lace monitor's treatment. So just before she wakes up, did you want to give her a bit of a kiss on the nose? I can't. <laughs> I can't do it. No, come on. Kiss goodbye. Ah! They're awake. It's important for me to see her moving like this. It emphasises the fact that there's no damage to her spinal cord and she's recovered well from the procedure. I think now we'll pop her back to bed to wake up more. I'm feeling pretty chuffed with myself now. I think that all went very well. If another one came in, yes, I would treat it. While Lisa is congratulating herself on controlling her fear of reptiles, vet nurse Jess is still not convinced. Go, go. Oh my God! <laughs> <laughs> you are evil, all of you. <sighs> She's still a princess, until she kisses a toad. You should be telling me how brave I was. I was so brave. OK, all done. She was very well behaved. Belly's going home after surviving an attack that nearly tore her neck apart. 
Bye bye. Who knows? Maybe I'll become Sasha's resident lace monitor specialist. There's my role. <laughs> but I'll never kiss one that is never, ever, ever going to happen. <laughs> Billy's in this one. Yeah, Billy's in here. A few days later, vet nurse Jess visits Peter's Reptile Resort to check up on Billy's progress. It's a bit of a size difference here. The patient is being reacquainted with Big Rex, who nearly tore the lace monitor's head off. Mm. Oh, he's having a bit of a taste there. Yeah. Don't want any fighting going on here. They're cold? Yeah. Oh, he's not, not very, very happy. happy, is he? She's incredibly lucky. I think she should, uh, she should buy the next lotto ticket, maybe. <laughs> On an unusually wet day in Bondi, Come on, gorgeous. an even more unusual pet is arriving at Kate's Veterinary Hospital. Hello, buddy. Emma, son Wayne and granddaughter Maddie have brought in nine-month-old Callie for some rather delicate surgery. It's a really interesting day in the vet clinic today. I've got a sheep and we're going to be removing his tail today. Oh, he's so friendly, you guys. <laughs> so friendly. Kelly is our pet sheep. He is a beautiful boy. He's so friendly. He's like a dog. If you scratch his ears, his back leg comes up and he starts going like this. He's, he's, yeah, he is just beautiful. One in a million. But Kelly has had a tough start in life. His mother died in, okay. when he was born and his twin brother and they had to raise him on a bottle. Okay. When it came time for him to become a meat sheep, she couldn't do it. Okay, and her course. husband gave her a month to mm -hmm. find a home. Okay. Which is when I came in. Yeah. So. Kate's more used to cats and dogs, but she also knows a fair bit about pet sheep. We need to remove Callie's tail today because this tail is a risk. It's a risk to Callie's health long term. We know that sheep with long tails can quite often get fly strike, particularly in the hot Australian summer. Fly strike is where flies start to lay eggs in the wool and around the bottom, and then essentially you get this really large mass of maggots around that back end. We try really hard to do these when they're little, know, you know, because yeah. it's slightly less traumatic. Yeah, but it is what it is. He's still a young sheep. He is okay. going to be okay. All right. <laughs> Maddie, are you going to stay? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Normally, people don't really get a chance to see their own pets having surgery, but in this case, Maddie works here as a vet nurse, so of course she's going to stay today. Hey darling, we are good? I personally don't know too much about watching sheep surgery, but I've seen Kate do every other surgery and she does it beautifully, so I made sure that he was okay. So you're going to induce and then pop him straight on the table? Let's do that, because that. that's as low as the table going, otherwise yep. it'll be challenging. Callie's going to go under a general anaesthetic, full pain relief, the whole works. I've asked my good friend Ash Allison down from Sash, and that is because he's a specialist in anaesthetics. Sheep have quite a few stomachs, and that means that the risk here is that Cali regurgitates when he's under anaesthetic. One, two, three. The chance of him sucking that fluid back into his lungs is very real. This is where the risk is. Kato's removing all of the wool from the area and she's got to clip this tail. Callie is some kind of a mixed breed sheep. I can see that he's got some dorper in him, but he's got a large amount of merino in him. Trying to get dog or cat clippers through this wool is a really big task. These guys are woolly. Kate will be under pressure to remove the exact amount of tail. If we take this tail too short, these guys can get sunburnt down around their tails. So if you don't cover that bottom properly, it can be a real risk for them. We want to try and keep this general anaesthetic as short as we possibly can. Sheep are the trickiest of animals to put under a general anaesthetic. These guys can regurgitate at any time, they can get hypothermia, problems with their breathing, so many things can go wrong. And the longer that Kelly is under general anaesthesia, the more risky it is. The first thing we need to do is cut the skin. And we need to make sure that we leave enough skin so that we can get this closed. So we need to cut a little bit lower to make a nice fold over that vertebral column. 
It's a lot bigger than a dog's tail. It has a lot more blood vessels and a lot more bleeders. So when we cut, we need to make sure that we tie off or cauterise any of the little bleeders. All right, let's do it. Mm. Got one tail off. So now what we have to do is we're going to suture this up and importantly, very neatly. Look at that. Covers his bottom perfectly. It looks quite cute, to be honest with you. Yeah. Good job. I'm very happy with the job that's been done. He looks excellent. He looks a bit funny with a shaved bum, but yeah. A new look Kelly has been given pain relief and will be left to sleep before heading home with his family. No, don't eat the cord. Come on, stop that. It's the internet cord. Kelly the pet sheep is awake after his tail surgery and he's making himself at home. He's well and truly ready to go. I'm going to send him home with his hay so on the way he can have a comfortable journey. Owner Emma can't wait to take her boy home. It's been very anxious. I've been texting Maddie continuously saying, is he under, is he asleep, how's it all going? Hang on this way, this way, this way, come on. I really am looking forward to seeing him. I just want to know myself that he's okay and the minute he comes to me I know that he'll be fine. This will all grow back. Should look absolutely beautiful in the next couple of days. Yes. See you, buddy. See you later. You. See you later, alligator. Yeah. Kate's done an amazing job. It looks so good and it's reassured us that we've um, made, made the right choice for, for his future. Hi, I'm Dr. Kate, and if you enjoyed this video, make sure you subscribe to the Bondi Vet YouTube channel. Click on the screen for more great content. And for free, exclusive, never seen before Bondi Vet stories, you can sign up to bondipet.com, and you can do so via the link in the description.